first slide we're going to do is uh, it's a CDC and elk I'm going to do, and it's uh, kind of an easier way to do an elk hair caddis. Use a different material. We're going to use some CDC, but I don't think we've done so far. And before I do it, Gene's going to talk a little bit about CDC feathers CDC. and what they are and where they come from and, and well, what, they're, what they're used for. CDC actually comes from it's the feather around the glands of any water bird, ducks, geese, swans, um, around their gland. When you see ducks turning around their butt and picking up their butt, they're picking up oil, stroking their feathers to keep, them, to keep the feathers from soaking water, helps them flow. But a CDC feather has got an unusual structure to it, in fact that um, the oil is not what makes it float. The oil prevents the feather from absorbing water. So the oil doesn't float it, it just prevents the feather from absorbing it. But the CDC feather is a very unusual because it has so many fine spines that it actually captures air. If you remember from the last class we showed you the photo of it. I mean every dry fly, even those that I don't use CDC, I soak it with this first. So that I never have to deal with my fly on the water with floatants. The only thing I carry with me is a desiccant, Shimazaki. Ah. Or, or uh, That's what you want, right? Or he, or frog fanny. Fanny. Oh, he uses frog, frog fanny, Shimazaki. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, I said, I happen to use Shimazaki, but I was about ready to mention frog fanny. But that's what you really want to use. If you're going to use this CDC oil, let me just kind of hold it right there. You see, can you feel it right there? There it is. I get it from Trout Hunter, okay? And it's just the oil. The advantage is, is it'll soak into any hair or any natural fiber and prevent it from absorbing water. So it really creates what you want, helps your floating flies float. But then you cannot use anything but a desiccant on it if they do get wet, okay? So, you know, the other thing about frog's fanny as opposed to, to Shimazaki or the loon, there's a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of what, what, what they do that works better, it comes with this little brush. And I mean, you know if you just saw a little puff that came off of there? But the thing about Shimazaki or something, if you're going to just throw it in your whole fly in there and shake it up, it's going to powder your whole fly up. Right. A lot of times I don't want to do that. I just want to have the wing floating or something. And with the brush, you can actually just go in there and just powder up the, the wing. Or with the CDC, you get that brush in there and you just kind of really get in there tight and, and, and keep brushing it. And those things pop out. They're just like, they're better than when you started. Mm -hmm. When CDC wants a fish, he takes a fly with CDC. It's worthless if you want to float it. You can't float it. You got to wash it off in the stream and kind of blot it off, and then use some kind of a desiccant on it. So, so that's the one thing about CDC. It either floats like crazy or it sinks like a rock. So, the other thing this this stuff will do, and any desiccant will do, it actually puts bubble. You can put this stuff on your nymphs, and it puts air bubbles all around your nymphs. And when they they go in the water, man, they just kind of glow. It, it traps all this all this uh, air on them, and that's what CDC is really good at too. So. So anyway, I don't know if everybody looked at those flies, but this is basically an easy way to tie an elk hair caddis. The thing about this fly, it sits lower in the water, it's got a lot of sparkle to it, traps a lot of air, and it only uses two materials and it takes about two minutes to tie. So it's got a lot, a lot of stuff going for it. And I don't know why this guy calls it a CDC and elk, because he uses deer hair for the wing instead. Actually, deer hair works better. But Well, when Hans Wellman started it, he actually used elk. Yeah. And yeah. everybody else since then has moved over to... But Anyway, so we'll start, and I'm, I'm using tan thread, you can use whatever color you want, but uh, caddis flies tend to kind of be, have tan heads on them, so, so I'm just going to get my thread on here. Now did you start your thread all the way at the eye? No, not quite. You know, you can start in the middle, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to come right back, back to the bend of the hook. Now this, what you're looking for in a CDC feather is a feather that looks. Can you see that? Yeah. That's that's about. Shows up. Better. Shows up better without the part. Okay. Yeah. You want a feather that's about two and a half to three times the length of the hook. Because what we're going to do with this, we're going to make the body out of it. And we're going to make the hackle out of it. So, what I'm going to do is, about midway in this feather, I'm going to fan these fibers back. <clears throat> And that's going to be my hackle. And then I'm going to take the back of this feather and kind of fold it down. And that's going to be the body part of it. You can see that how I've got that all folded down tight. And then I'm just going to catch the tip of this feather. 
get it tied down, and bring my thread almost to the eye, back about an eye length from the eye. And these feathers have a natural curve, so I want the basically I want the curve down. I'm going to hook my hack pliers on it. And I'm going to wind, start winding my body with it. That's it. That's it. When I get about halfway there, now what I want to do, I want to start folding this hackle, these fibers back at every turn. So as I make a turn, then I'm going to fold them back. And I'm going to keep going forward. And if my feather's right and I've done this right, I'm going to end come up just about to the eye. sticking out in front. I'm going to kind of print it back. Wrap over it a little bit to get it facing to the rear. <coughs> and that's it for, for the body and the hat. Now if you don't like how it's all real long, you can actually trim the bottom a little bit. But the more stuff that's moving around, probably the better. Now I'm just going to put a wing on it, just like an elk or a caddis. And I've got some deer hair here that I actually like better than elk. The big difference between elk and deer, other than color, is elk is a little it takes a little bit more abuse than a deer hair. Yeah, it's a lot. It's it's tougher it's than this. Tougher one. hair, um, but in, in this fly, either one works. If you the trouble is with elk, you're not going to get any of the grays. You're only going to get tan. Yeah, and this if you want a gray wing, you got to have to go to deer. And this piece of hair has a really nice banding. The other thing about the this hair is going to flare more than than uh, elk would too. Mm -hmm. and I kind of like the wings kind of fanned out. It lays a little flatter on the water. Sometimes it doesn't stack. You can stack it and trim it. And stack it again. Some some of this hair has a lot of under fur in it. So you can see that. This piece has, see all that under fur? You need have to get all that out of there or it's not going to stack right for you. But this hair has some real nice bands in it. And you always want to take your hair out in the direction you want the tips to be pointing. So the length of the wing I like to put the length of the wing to come to like the end of the bend. So I'm going to measure that. And the other you can do this two ways. You can you can measure your wing, switch hands and then you can cut the cut the butts off and then you the length you want and tie it down. Or you can do like I do. I like to leave the, the butts really long because when I whip finish I want to be able to have something to to grab onto so I can pull it back and kind of stack my thread in there. So I always leave the butts long on, on downwing caddis flies. So I'm going to switch hands. And here I'm going to do a little thing that Gene, I know you do. Instead of just tying this hair down and pulling down on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a loop of thread around the hair itself. And what it's going to do, it's going to keep it from falling down on both sides of the hook shank. And what you can do, you can spin your thread counterclockwise, and it's going to make it when you go around, it's going to throw, make the, the thread pop back toward the bend. Or if you want it to go the other way, you can do it clockwise, and it'll make your thread go go the other direction. You'll see what I mean here. You see how that thread wants to pop back, so it doesn't come over the eye. So I'm going to make a loop around it. I'm going to go around again, 
and then I'm going to come up and when I pull, I'm going to pull straight up until my thread is about ready to break and I'm going to keep tension on it, I'm not going to let go of the fibers in my left hand and I'm going to put about three good wraps right here and my tension basically is harder going down than it is going up I'm just keeping tension but as I go around here I'm going to pull down and that's really going to sink into that hair then I'm just going to come up here with these long butts and I can get up underneath it I can lock those fibers in there and then I can whip finish it so now with those long butts I can just pull them back out of the way and do my whip finish if I had cut them off real short like my head then I wouldn't be able to get in there to put that whip finish and on all out care casts I kind of like to make my head, my measurement for my head is at the eye of the hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull these fibers together. I just rest my scissors on the eye of the hook and cut it off and that's my head. And those of you guys know I'm big on flex amount so I, I saturate it pretty good because I don't want these things coming apart. I just might get my and what you do not want to use is you don't want to put head cement down underneath the CDC when you wrap the body. Do not. No, no you don't it. want to get any in the CDC for sure. Yeah. yeah that's but here's, what, here's what I like to do in all of Kirkatis and like sparkle does. I like, I like to get a big daub of glue right there so it really soaks into those thread wraps and into the, the hair itself. And when I'm done, I'll take it out and I'll. I'll put a little bit of head cement on the thread wraps underneath too. And that's it. And when I go to fish it, all I'm going to do is I'll take some gink or something and I'll gink the wing but I won't touch anything else on it. And then once I catch a fish I'll use the the uh, frog fanny and I'll I'll dust up the whole belly of that thing and the wing and everything else and really really rub that that stuff in and the thing will just pop right out and it'll be It'll float just like it was even better than when it's when I first started.